So we're right around the 80th anniversary of the 1934 American League Baseball Tour to Japan. Um, and uh, this year, November 2014, Major League Baseball will be traveling um, and also our team to Japan as well. And we thought uh, it would be fun to talk about the 1934 tour. We have with us Rob Fitz, who literally wrote the book on the tour, a book called Banzai Beirut that came out in 2012 on top of which a really neat discovery was made just recently here at the Hall of Fame and that is um, that our multimedia uh, team discovered um, some footage that we didn't realize we had of the 1934 tour um, taken by Jimmy Fox, Hall of Famer, and his wife. So we thought we would uh, show some of the video to you and uh, talk about what we're seeing. So Ruth was pretty important to this tour. Yes, Ruth was paramount to this tour. They tried for three years to get him and they were hoping to have the tour as early as 32, but they needed uh, Ruth, and he finally agreed in 34. But there were a lot of other players who were supposed to go on the tour who didn't go. Oh, absolutely. How did that work out? Well, the team actually was supposed to be even more star-studded than it was. Joe Cronin, the Hall of Fame shortstop, was supposed to make it. Rogers Hornsby was supposed to make it. And it was supposed to be a MLB tour. But the NL uh, owners decided they didn't want their star players to get injured. Um, during the tour, so right. they voted to not let the major league, uh, not let the National League players go. So then, Connie Mack was kind of in charge, and he let his son Earl take control. So Earl, working with Lefty O'Doul and Satoru Suzuki, had to bring together the roster. And the only caveat was Babe Ruth had to be on it. Mm -hmm. But anybody else, they could put the team, and they were supposed to come up with the perfect team of stars and gentlemen. So you got a Bing Miller, you got an Eric McNair, various guys who are filling in for the guys who dropped out. Right. Um, but the team had to be doing two things. They had to play baseball, but they had to be ambassadors at the same exactly. time. Exactly. And they took the ambassador role very seriously. And, and as a historian, the guy who's, who's researched this more than anyone else, did they pull it off? Were they good ambassadors? Or they were, were a wonderful bit ambassadors. There is no record of any problems. They behave very well, and the Japanese newspapers noted how well they behaved. So yes. Now this is Satoru Suzuki. Mm -hmm. um, he was the general manager of the tour. He was an employee of the Yomiuri Shinbun, which is the newspaper that actually sponsored the tour. And he was hired to make sure this tour worked and to finalize all the details and to travel with the American team. So they did a lot of practicing on board ship? They did. And they put up netting on top of the uh, deck so that the balls would stay in. Here's Mo Berg. Now Mo Berg, is a neat character, and I want you to talk about him, but he's wearing a jacket there that we actually have in our collection. This is Moberg's jacket and cap from the tour. Can you talk a little bit about, about what we're seeing here? So Moberg is one of the most interesting characters probably in the history of baseball. And most fans know that during World War II he became a spy. I mean, Moberg was an odd fish. He had graduated Princeton. He attended the Sorbonne. He had attended Columbia Law School. He was considered the smartest man in baseball, and he probably was. So he liked to foster this intellectual, mysterious atmosphere. And when he was with the Washington Senators, he enjoyed the company of diplomats. I mean, he was a very intelligent, very well-read man. So where are we now? This is okay, so this actually happened the second day they were in Japan. So this would be in, um, I believe, November 3rd. They had a scrimmage um, during the daytime. And then they went to the garden party of the Marquis Okumo. And, um, Okuma was the figurehead of the Japanese baseball team. He was the, the president, although he wasn't really involved in baseball that much. Um, and this is his mansion, and they did a, some sort of contest, and they invited, I think it was the 60 or 70th most beautiful waitresses from Tokyo to come and serve the players um, luncheon. And both teams are here, the Japanese and the Americans, and they were introduced to each other. Um, for the first time. So we see Babe Ruth, we see Jimmy Fox with all these women around them. So now we're at a ballpark. Which ballpark are we seeing here? Let's see. Of uh, Meiji Jingu Ballpark in Tokyo. This would have been the first actual game, but they didn't play the All Nippon team. This was a warm up game. They played a team called the Tokyo Club, which was also an all star squad. They were dressed all in white. So here's some action from the game Ruth at bat. And Gehrig on deck, that's a familiar sight, but not in those uniforms. So now how did these games work out? I mean, it was the Major League Baseball players were, were doing better than the 
they were pretty one-sided. Um, Major League Baseball at that time was really much better than Japanese baseball. And um, they outscored the Japanese throughout the whole tour by well over 100 runs. Um, the Japanese came close twice. There were two games where they almost won later in the tour, but the rest of the games were pretty much blowouts. A lot of the time, the players really, the players had a lot of time to wander the streets and uh, take pictures. Um, although they were mobbed almost everywhere they went, they usually had some sort of escort to, to allow them to walk down the street. But the players would go off, and especially the wives had a lot of time. When the players traveled, um, the wives would often stay with Connie Mack, and they could walk around with a very light escort, and they got to see a lot of cultural sites. Now, the Japanese people love the American ball players, and this is a time of um, a lot of tension between the Japanese country and the American country, and there was open talk of war on both sides, but the ball players were so well received that even the American diplomats were saying, we can't possibly have a war with people who love baseball this much and people who love American baseball this much. And yet. And yet. But for a brief time, the ballplayers and the tour really did bring the two countries close together. That's amazing.